Today's episode has actually been inspired by one of you guys. One of the subscribers of this channel simply asked me to make a Q&A video talking about the questions that are usually asked during the German student visa interview. Now, to be honest, I wasn't actually aware that it was necessary for students from specific nations to go through an interview in order to be granted the German student visa because Kenyans coming to study in Germany are not required to participate in any interviews in order to be granted the student visa. At least when I was applying for my study visa, I wasn't made to do any interview whatsoever. But it seems for some nationalities, particularly those from West Africa such as Ghana and Nigeria, an interview is a must. So after consulting some of the Ghanaian and Nigerian students I have met here in Munich, I have managed to obtain 16 different questions that are usually asked during the German student visa interview. But just be aware, not all 16 questions will be asked in a single interview, only some of them, but in my opinion, it's best to be overprepared than to be underprepared. Make sure you watch this video to the end as some of the questions were expected and others honestly caught me off guard. But before we get started with this video, I've looked through my analytics and noticed that 77% of you watching are not subscribed. And so I kindly ask that you leave a like on the video and subscribe that way the YouTube algorithm recommends this video to more people and in the end, more people benefit. Also, leave a comment in case you want me to make a video about a specific topic related to living and studying in Germany. One thing you need to be aware of about these interview questions is that they can generally be split into three categories, which are questions about Germany as a country, questions about the course that you are coming to study, and finally the most critical one is questions about yourself as an individual. Questions about Germany as a country are just meant to test whether you have any basic knowledge of the country that you're planning to spend the next two plus years in. Question number one, which is the most common, why Germany? Or another way they can rephrase the question is why not other countries such as Canada, UK, USA, and so on. The answer for this is very simple. You simply say that you are searching for a course in a specific field, for example, environmental engineering, and then you came across a university that offered the course that you wanted and it happened to be in Germany. But you had no doubts about applying for the course because you know Germany is well renowned for offering high quality education in the specific field you are searching for when compared to your home country and to other nations. Another question about Germany that is usually asked is, what famous tourist attraction in Germany do you know? The answer for this is pretty easy and you can mention the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin or the Cologne Cathedral and you can also Google other places as well. The third question about Germany that was frequently asked was, which countries border Germany? So just like the previous question, simply Google it, but I think there are nine if I'm not wrong. And the last question that is usually asked about Germany as a country is how many states does Germany have? And yes, you should Google the names. Off the top of my head, I think there are 16 in total. I'm not sure. Moving on to the second category of questions, and these basically revolve around the program or the course that you're going to study. And the frequently asked questions are, for example, what is the name and the location of the university that you're going to study in? Also, what is the name of the course or the program that you're going to pursue? These two questions are pretty straightforward to answer because you should not only know the name and location of your university, but also be aware of important details of the program that you're planning to do, such as some of the units that you will do in your first semester in the program. 
The other question that is commonly asked is how long is your program going to take to complete and what is the planned start date of your program? I feel these kind of questions are asked to basically check whether you are actually coming to study or you're just planning to use the study visa as a way into Germany and to do your own things. The next frequently asked question is what language is your program taught in? So here, if your program is fully taught in English, you basically say that. If your program is partly taught in English and in German, for example, you could argue that the German courses that are taught in the program are not compulsory courses. So you won't really take them. And if your program is in German, it's pretty obvious you should be fluent in the language if you're planning to come to study in German. You could also be asked whether your program is related to any previous studies that you have already completed. This question is usually asked to try and see the relation between what you have already academically achieved and what you're planning to come and study in Germany. For example, it would be much easier to explain that you're coming to do a master's in environmental engineering because for your bachelor's, you did environmental engineering as well and now you want to specialize in a specific field. In the last section, questions are mostly about you as an individual. So for example, they may ask what is your current academic level of study and when did you graduate? Again, pretty straightforward. Just say your highest academic level to date and the date of your graduation. Just make sure it matches the date on your certificate. During the interview, you may also be asked what have you been doing since your graduation? The answer to this depends on the individual, but just try to make sure whatever you wrote on your CV matches whatever you will say during the interview. Also, just try to be as honest as possible and learn the skill of turning a negative into a positive. So for example, if you've been unemployed for the past two years after graduation, you could say that a lot of companies you've been applying to have been asking for master's level of qualification in order to be considered as a candidate. So that's why you decided to pursue your master's. You know, something like that. Another frequently asked question is whether the program that you're coming to study in Germany is related to your work experience. So for example, a lot of the times after completing your bachelor's, you end up finding a job in your specific field and after working for some time, eventually you decide to pursue a master's program. So in that case, both your bachelor's and your work experience match what you're coming to do here in Germany. And in case the master's you're applying for is outside the scope of your work experience, you could also argue that you want to pursue the master's so that you can gain knowledge and learn new skills. The next question is, how do you plan to finance your education and what proof do you have? There are only three ways to finance your studies in Germany. That is, one, through a scholarship, two, a sponsorship by a German resident, or three, through the blocked account method. Whichever of these three that you choose, just be aware you'll be required to have documentation to prove your claim. If you're financing your studies through a scholarship, be aware of all the details of what your scholarship covers and doesn't cover. Or if it's a sponsorship by an individual, then you may be asked details about the individual such as what is their name, what is their surname, are they married, do they have children, what state does he or she live in, what does this person do for work, just to actually see whether you know the person who is going to sponsor you for the next two plus years of your studies. Have you already organized your accommodation in Germany? Ask anyone who lives in Germany, particularly in big cities, and they'll tell you finding accommodation is amongst the most difficult things to do. So when asked this question, the interviewer just wants to know one of two things. One, are you aware of how difficult it is to get an accommodation? And two, how do you plan to find a place to live once you land in Germany? Some of the answers that would be sufficient to answer this question are, for example, you've applied to the student accommodation offered by your university and you're waiting for a response. 
you're currently searching on websites such as Vege Gesucht, or maybe you're lucky and somehow you've already found accommodation. The next question is, do you know anyone in Germany? This is another tricky question because the answer is determined by what you have previously said. So for example, if you're coming to Germany through a sponsorship, of course you have to mention that you know the person who is sponsoring you. But if that's not the case, just say you don't know anyone here in Germany. It doesn't matter whether there's a classmate you are with in primary school here in Germany or even your girlfriend, for example, who is already studying or living here. Just keep it simple. Say you don't know anyone. Another common question is, what future plans do you have after graduation? When answering this question, just be straightforward because you plan to come to Germany to study, to acquire knowledge and skills that cannot be found in your home country. And therefore, after you complete your studies, you will go back to your home country. Nothing more, nothing less. So, yeah. Those are the 16 commonly asked questions for the German student visa interview. Hopefully my answers made sense. And in case there was something that didn't make sense, kindly let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if there are some questions that I may have missed, you can also write them in the comment section down below. That way everyone benefits. Once again, if you found value in today's video, Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications and leave a comment that way I'm able to know whether you actually enjoyed today's episode or not. That way I know how to improve the quality of these videos. I hope you have an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're watching this. And until next time, bye bye.